And here I have a completed lay. Have you ever made a lay? Have you ever received a lay? If so, what type? Tell me in the comment section below because today you're invited to a lay making party. We're going to be making lay haku. First, we're going to go out into the garden and I'm going to grab some materials to put in my lay. These are the Palapalai fern, and they are a symbolic fern that are used for lei that you're going to be using for a ceremony, perhaps, to Pele or the goddess of Hula Laka. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pluck each one of these off of the main stem and because these will wilt easily if they're not in a cool area, you want to keep spraying them with water. This is my pile of palapalai and I'm going to spray them and keep them cool and the fan running. And this is the la'i or the tea leaf that I'm going to use as not only the background of my lay, but I will also incorporate it into the lay. First, I need to take the midrib out of the leaf. And by that, this midrib needs to be removed so that we can make the tea leaf soft so it can be braided. Now, in order to debone this, what you wanna do is make it so that the EV or the bone, the parts of the Lao La E, which is the tea leaf here, uh, we refer to it like a fish. The tip is the pull. You have an EV here. EV means bone, literally. And here we have the hiu, or the tail of the La E. You just want to do this so that the leaf, the bone itself, is in half. You're not ripping the leaf in any form. And then using the edge of a table, and with bigger leaves, these are so much easier to do. All you're gonna do is you wanna take this off. So I'm gonna use the edge of the table here. All right, so the main thing is I wanna take off this EV. Okay, so you're going to get this to come off. Now after deboning the tea leaves, and these are short ones, and I've wet them, I'm going to put them into the microwave with some water very carefully so that they become supple. So you got to be careful when you watch them on while they're in the microwave. All you want to do is you're basically steam, steaming them just enough to make them soft so they don't crackle or break. So my tea leaf, I don't really want to fold them or anything other than I want to lay them out straight right now. So I'm going to straighten out my leaves here and then we'll get to our next item that we will be putting in a lei haku. Haku means to compose, like you haku mele, that's comp song composition. Um, in this case, we are putting together a lei with different materials. Or the other two things I'm gonna incorporate into my lei are some of these flowers. That and we have roses from a rose bush. Get the clumps ready to use so that when you start making your lay, you're in a rhythm. Now I'm going to use a braided style to braid the flowers and other materials, the fern, into the lay. So I have the loke or the roses, these other pua, these other flowers, my la e, which I will be using as the uh, 
foundation or the backing of the lei. And I also have my Pala Palai fern here. Let's begin, shall we? One of the most important rules to remember when you're making lei are to number one, be in the right frame of mind. In Hawaiian, we have spiritual power. It's referred to as mana. So when you make things, your mana goes into those items that you're making. And what you wanna do is have good thoughts. And if you're making it for someone in particular, you want to think about them as you're making the lei. So I'm going to start with taking my longest lei that are here, or my longest lai. I'm going to take three halves. So I'm going to, from the po'o, the tip here, I'm going to create a cut. And then that's going to just take me all the way down evenly. So again, I'm just going to make a split in the leaf at the pull, and it's going to give me a nice even split. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the three hi'u and I'm going to Tie a knot. And then we're going to braid. You need this to be taught. So you might ask someone to hold this end for you. But what we want to do is you want to make it taut. And, and we're just gonna braid without putting any flowers in or any of the material until the harder part of the bone is braided. So I have about a half, about an inch, an inch or so that's just braided without any materials for the lay. And now I'm gonna start putting the pieces in for the lay. So I'm gonna start off with the palapalai and I'm going to take a clump of them maybe three and you want to take the three or take the clump rather kind of crimp it at a spot where they all meet so I'm going to crimp those together I'm going to take it and go Braid it over once. Try to make it as taut as I can. And for the leaf that you have or the materials that you have that are hanging at the bottom, we just fold them up as such. Now we're gonna add on the next bunch on top of that. Braid that back over. I'm going to push the leftover bunch up. Okay. And I'm going to do one more of the fern before I start adding any of the flowers. Because we want to have a stable, sturdy a uh, couple of inches at the beginning of our lay so that the other materials aren't loose and fall out. If you are performing and any of your lay or costume fall off, that is symbolic of a dancer not being prepared, not having things not only tight, uh, on their costume so they don't fall off, but it symbolizes that the hula dancer is not secured in its knowledge as well. So it's uh, very symbolic. All right, along with some fern this time, I'm gonna take a couple pieces of fern and I'm gonna add in one of the rose buds. 
Orson Welles. Okay, so I'm gonna braid and hold on to that. And anything I have left over at the bottom, I'm going to attempt to, to turn upwards. Okay. And now we'll take some more fern. And it also gives the lay a fuller look uh, when you push the other end of the fern up. Okay. So we're going to do this. Hold that over. And I'm going to fold the bottom under. And because you don't want the stem sticking up, you kind of just fold them down the best that you can. This time I'm going to use a little piece of the um, tea leaf. Take a piece of the tea leaf. I'm going to stick it there with the fern. And I'm going to, I have that that's going to stick up. And some things, yes, we're going to cut. Okay. So I'm going to continue to do this. Now, at this point, my tea leaf is getting short. So what I'm going to eventually do is I'm going to have to add on, maybe after another couple of turns, I'm going to add on the leaf to continue so that I have, I can make the lay longer. And although it's just the beginning, continue to spray your lay. Keep the lay materials uh, sprayed in a cool area. Other things you can do for effects are you can take the tea leaf strips that you're using and you can fold them to make a loop. And then that also adds a nice decoration to the lay. Now I'm ready to add on to this tea leaf with a new leaf. So all I'm gonna do is kind of like the tea leaf that I used as a decoration, I'm gonna use the tip of the tea leaf to put as decoration in there. It's gonna stick up. And then down here at the bottom, I'm just gonna continue to, you can either fold the old leaf inside the new one, or you can just continue braiding by pushing the two of them together. So we're gonna now fold that over and hold it as taut as you can. And then we will continue with the tea leaf or the ferns going in, ferns in, and we're gonna take the leaf and pull it over so we have a nice uh, taut pull there and sometimes you can take that bottom from the previous one and push it up it makes part of a decoration you don't want to have to cut that much and you can use many parts of the scoop the Stuff coming out of the bottom to just either braid in or fold up and in some cases yes you might have to cut it off so let's continue on
I'm near the end, I'm going to just take all my, my last the tea leaf that I've been using as the back. We're gonna braid it all together. And I'm gonna tie a knot here. So what this does is it gives me cordage so that I can tie the two sides together. So this side here What you want to do is clip some of the things, the, some of the straggly ends off. And here I have a completed lei. I'm going to put this around my ipu heke. It is a hula percussion instrument and made from calabash gourds. So this is my ipu heke and it's laying down and where the heke is connected that is where I have adorned my instrument. And that's the beautiful lei haku, a lei that is composed of different items and this is done in a braided style. Lay are symbolic of children and sweethearts. Oftentimes in poetry, you'll hear a song about a lay, and not only is it talking about a lay, but it's also referring to a child or a loved one, perhaps the way that a child holds on to a parent around the neck or the way in which two sweethearts embrace each other. Lei play a big role in Hawaiian society and poetry and symbolism. This is the Travelin' Bee saying mahalo nui loa to all of you for joining me on this fragrant and most beautiful day of making a haku lei. I invite you all to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to receive all notifications. If you enjoyed today's lei haku video, how about a thumbs up and hit that like button and be sure to share the aloha. As we say in Hawaiian, until we meet again, ahui ho and aloha.